So, laser rate equation emission there will be spontaneous emission there will be stimulated emission. Okay. Now, in spontaneous emission we know that that is independent of photon number there are no photons involved in the process. So, the rate of spontaneous emission should be independent of photon number. So, that rate of spontaneous emission is Rsp. Let me call that as Rsp, this number of photons per second. Why is this not equal to n by tau c? Why is this not equal to n by tau c? What was n by tau c? Rate of recombination. That includes both radiative and non-radiative recombination. We are interested only in the radiative part of it, right. So, that is why we are representing it with a different rate. That tau c will have tau r and tau n r. So, this Rsp has to be related to your tau r radiative recombination type, okay. Whereas, stimulated emission it requires population inversion. I told you all already in the beginning of the lecture today what is this population inversion where I have enough n so as to compensate for the uh, absorption in the system. Then the rate of emission should be proportional to the photon number. Larger you are exciting the system the rate it, it should it should initiate. In fact, this is uh, Einstein's contribution that it is proportional to the stimulated emission is proportional to the photon number. Right? So, Einstein wrote down these basic equations long time ago. Uh, even though Einstein is known for its re relativity, uh, uh, you know there are certain so many other things where he has contributed. So, this rate equations these are called as Einstein's coefficients, this Rsp is called as Einstein's coefficients. Right? He came up with this idea about what these rates should be dependent on. So, how do I now find out the rate of emission? Uh, I want to relate it to the earlier equation that we wrote. What did we write? We wrote that p is equal to some p naught e power 2 g uh, d, no 4 g d if it is power, right. If it is field it was 2 g d and we wrote what that g was, okay. How do I now relate it to, how do I write, write it as a dp by dt now? Again the same argument. If I have dz propagation, P is my incident photon. Uh, this relation would tell me that dp by dz is equal to 2gp because this is okay. So, p is equal to e power 4gd assuming that the uh, z is 2d okay that is how we got 4gd. But if I am just assuming a distance z propagating. So, I know that this is going to be 2 g z. So, the relation is actually d p by d z is 2 g p that is a rate at which the photon number is increasing. But you want time. So, how do you convert this into time? Like how we argued earlier we say related through the velocity and again with velocity you have to consider group velocity and not c. Okay. So, I can just write this uh, uh, distance dz as uh, vg into dt and then I can rephrase this dz I can substitute as vg into dt, vg is a constant. So, I get it as a dp by dt equation. Okay. So, I get it as a dp by dt is equal to 2g vg and then there is p and I am calling going to call this 2g vg as capital G just as a notation. So, uh, uh, the rate at which the stimulated emission is happening now I got g p. Rate at which spontaneous emission in is happening I got r s p. Rate at which the photons are decaying I already derived minus p by tau p. So, what is the total rate equation? My rate of change of photon density in the gain medium is g p because of stimulated emission. Rsp because of spontaneous emission and p by tau p because of decay of photons. One rate equation is done. We just uh, figured out what this factor is and you should remember that this uh, g is uh, 2g vg 
and this small g is you had 2 gamma uh, a n minus n naught b g. I am just avoiding writing all this by writing it as capital G. So, you have to understand the point you have to understand is that dp by dt is dependent on n okay because n uh, depending on your carrier density there is a certain population inversion and depending on that you will have a gain gain coefficient and depending on that you will have this constant g. It is not a equation with only one variable there are two variables in the system. Uh, so, very good question RSP also should depend on my n uh, in fact it should depend on the total n right. So, the the excess carrier that is available right I mean in fact it should depend on n minus n not there right. So, we are not going to be talking about it much because it will turn out that this RSP is going to be very small. So, we are not going to redefine in terms of n by tau c and complicate uh, n by tau r and complicate things. Now, what about the equation for carrier density can you write it try attempt writing out on your own d n by d t must be equal to it gets generated because of the injection current. So, what is the rate of injection of carriers per time current divided by charge and how did we write for LED I by Q. If I write it in terms of current density it will be J divided by Q times the thickness. So, that is the first term second term it gets decreased because of RSP. So, there should be a minus RSP because it is decreasing and it should again get decreased because of stimulated emission and rate of stimulated emission is G p. So, J by Q d n by tau c G p. This J by d is what we are we can write as I current. So, rate of injection, rate of generation of electron hole pair because of uh, uh, spontaneous and stimulated sorry spontaneous uh, recombination which could have radiative and non radiative and that is different from RSP GP. So, this term is not RSP if you had written it as RSP it should be n by tau c because RSP was only the radiative part. So, J is your current density in ampere per meter square. So, that becomes ampere per meter square and a meter. So, that becomes ampere per meter cube an ampere is charge per time. So, you divide it out by charge it will become number per uh, number per meter cube per time uh, p is the photon number per unit volume and we already defined what your g is. So, this equation n is now dependent on p. So, you had a p equation which was depending on n and you had an n equation which is dependent on p. So, you have a set of coupled differential equations ok. Now, what happens in steady state? This should become 0. So, let us look at the steady state analysis. So, the coupled differential equation can you write down in steady state? the d n by d t equation should become 0 d p by d t equation. So, this two coupled equations both of them become 0. I can use this to immediately find out what is my photon number. You see this has only p. So, I can take p out of this. So, p into g minus 1 by tau p is equal to minus RSP. So, p is equal to RSP divided by 1 by tau p minus g and I have substituted all my 
definition of g. What does this mean now? Now let us try to do some physical interpretation. The photon density is inversely proportional to this quantity or it is inversely proportional to something that is dependent on n. So, when the laser you are trying to start turning on the laser, you slowly start injecting the current into the laser. As you increase the injecting current, what happens? So, initially it is n minus you, 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 do, you do not have a population inversion, you have absorptions in the system. But as you go on increasing your n, this term will start increasing. And if this term becomes greater than 1 by tau p, what happens? What really happens when this term greater than 1 by tau p? It will be negative. What does it mean? Before it becomes greater, what happens if the term becomes equal? If this term becomes equal to 1 by tau p, 1 by tau p what does it represent? Photon lifetime, what does it physically, which physical quantity does it represent? The loss in the system, right. So, this term is actually representing the loss in the system and this term is actually representing the gain in the system, okay. Now, if this becomes exactly equal, what happens? Will I get infinite photon number? No, that is not realistically possible. So, that is your condition for threshold, right. So, as the injection current increases, your n increases, so your g increases. When g approaches this number, photon density would approach infinity, it is not that you are going to get infinity. So, your that is your threshold operating point, right. So, at threshold, we can find out this term at threshold, these two terms are equal, okay. So, this number is equal to 0. So, I can actually calculate what is the population inversion required or photon density required to achieve threshold condition. That must be equal to, I have just put this as equal to 0. You rewrite this equation, you will get n th is equal to n naught plus this number. We have found out what is the threshold now. Now, the next thing is what happens if you go beyond threshold? What happens if you try to increase n beyond threshold? First of all, will I be ever able to reach the threshold? Question for you. Can I ever reach the threshold? Can I ever reach this nth? Physically, I can never reach the threshold because if I reach the threshold, it means that I will get infinite number of photons in the system. So, I will always have n which is slightly lower than the threshold. I will never. So, this my actual in a, if you were you had the ability to measure the current uh, carrier density inside a laser diode at threshold or beyond threshold also, the carrier density will get clamped at this number. Not exactly at this number, at a number which is slightly lower than this. 